also regarding the Google Manager, um, it, both the Epoch and Amsterdam and SmiteBot are consummate storytellers. And did you end up with a lot of footage of the stuff that you can truly use in the movie? Because it must have a, they, they, all, they all have a lot of stories. Yeah, well, we decided in the film to interview only the Stooges, um, and Mike Watt being a member of the Reformed Stooges, and uh, Danny Fields, their manager and who, who signed them initially, and Kathy Ashton, the sister of the two Ashton brothers. But we didn't want any other interviews with people outside the band, analyzing the band, critics, other musicians. So we chose to keep it intimate in that way. And yes, they are some great storytellers, especially, certainly Iggy. And Mike Watt is amazing. I could listen to him talk forever. So we had a lot of stuff. We had so much stuff. Carter and I were joking. Uh, we could make a 10-hour film, or we, we could make a film in 10 one-hour sections of just these people telling stories. But of course, that's not really feasible. So we made the film we made. But yeah, some great stories from them. A lot of I Iggy's uh, stories are the the structure of the film is based around a kind of oral history coming from him. And then we have these, the other people talking as well. You very famously worked with uh, the RZA and the Jizza, and you've now worked with Method Man. It's the first time, right? Yes. <laughs> Are you planning on working with other, with other Wu Tang Clan members? Maybe uh, by the time I'm done making films, I'll have all of the Wu Tang. <laughs> <laughs> Except for ODB, who in fact, uh, Riza and I wanted to make a film of ODB. Uh, when he was imprisoned, we wanted to go and film him and let him just talk uh, on camera about anything he wanted to talk about, about being pursued by flying saucers and the CIA, about the history of funk music, about I don't know, all of the things he loved or, or, or worried about or concerned him in life. And we, we didn't get permission to film him in prison. And then he came out and then he, we lost him not long after. So we did have a project about uh, Old Dirty Bastard. I, I wish I could have made that film and nothing but him talking, you know, would have been fantastic. But, but I love the Wu-Tang. They are... Um, musical innovators, they are intellectuals who are not refined by academics. They, they come from the streets of Staten Island and, and Brooklyn, and they are fantastic minds. They are amazing people, and um, I, l I learned a lot from, from knowing some of them. And Method Man, he's kind of their movie star of the Wu-Tang Clan, as they'll say, he's the handsome one. And uh, so we, we got him in this movie, and he, he was wonderful. He wrote his own little, all of his, his flow, his rap in the film is his own that he wrote after reading the script and talking with me. And it relates to the film and the story, and uh, even quotes William Carlos Williams, you know. So we're very proud to have um, Meth in the film. And we even have a script for the first pilot of this show that really RZA wrote with someone else that is fantastic. I, I love it, you know? I didn't write it. I uh, only gave a few ideas back, but I just love it. So I would love to have uh, a series based on, on Ghost Dog that is, uh, you know, has these elements of, of kind of hip hop culture mixed with martial arts and crime and uh, an action, which it's the, the pilot has quite a bit of martial arts stuff in it, and I loved it. So we're hoping that might happen. That's the only, the only thing I've even thought about trying as far as my films being extended into a new form, a TV type form. Uh, Martin, what increase official budget is your first time over here in Chicago, and what was your idea of being over here? Uh, to the festival, or? Uh, in place in the festival. Well, I haven't even been in Portugal since a long, long time. It's only my second time here. And, uh, but all of people I know and friends that have come here have been telling me for years 
this is the one of the most fantastic festivals and places. And so I just didn't have the chance to get here. It, so I figured, well, finally we have two films. We better come, you know. <laughs> <coughs> so um, I don't know. I'm very happy to be here. I'm honestly, I'm a little burned out in my life from festivals because number one, I don't like a lot of attention personally, and two, I, I'm there's often a lot of um, superficial things, business and press and things all around you in some festivals that can be helpful for your film but for me is not my thing you know and this is the opposite in a way in the way our films are kind of antidote to drama and action and stuff this festival is a kind of antidote to the festivals of business and uh, and the, the uh, and film as a business and I don't know. The, this is an amazing festival. The people being honored here, having these retrospectives of, of Godard, of Kustaritsa, of uh, Skolomowski, uh, Pascal Bonitzer. This is fantastic. I got to walk around twice now, sit down and talk with Jean-Pierre Léo, you know? It's like a dream to me. And uh, so many wonderful people here. It's, it's fantastic. So the whole atmosphere here is kind of anti-business of film. It's celebrating the joy of it, you know, the beauty of it. So, wow, what a, what a relief, what a nice place to be. Thank you for, <laughs> Thank for you having for us. <laughs>